Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006. We're going to talk about Bay diagrams. They're diagrams that help us understand simultaneously in a solution redox reactions and pH behavior. So Bay diagrams, what are they? Um, here's one over here. Uh, you can see on the horizontal axis is the pH, a bit like the log concentration pH diagram that we looked at before, but on the vertical axis we have now the electrochemical potential. Uh, so we can obviously adjust the pH of a solution by adding strong acids and bases. Likewise, we can also adjust the electrochemical potential of a solution by adding strong oxidizing or reducing agents. Or even more simply, by just whacking an electrode in the solution and dialing up a particular voltage that we want. Okay, assuming that we can do that, we will see that certain species will become stable or not stable. For example, at low pH and at low electrochemical potentials, copper metal is stable. At high uh, electrochemical potentials, voltages, these potentials are measured in voltages, at high voltages, CO2 plus is stable. And there's a point here where there is an equilibrium, uh, more or less equal amounts of Cu2 plus and copper solid. So there's an equilibrium line. And we have a series of these equilibrium lines separating regions in which different species are stable. So this is a map. The Paul Bay diagram is a map. It's a map of the most stable species in solution as a function of pH and voltage. Okay. Um, this map does depend on certain variables. Obviously, because these are equilibria type lines, they will depend on the concentration of the species that are present. Uh, typically, what's done is we assume that the total concentration of a species is constant, or we may partic assume particular concentrations, 10 to the minus 3, 1 molar, whatever we're interested in. And assuming these concentrations, we will be able to calculate these lines or measure them. And the positions of the lines will change with concentration. And also, like all equilibria, the positions of these lines depend on temperature and pressure. Now, of course, this is interesting to see what species we can have at a snapshot uh, under most normal conditions. Uh, these blue lines here, uh, the top blue line and the bottom blue line, represent the stability field of water. Um, if we have a voltage above this line, water is no longer stable, it will generate oxygen. Likewise, if we have a voltage lower than this particular voltage, we will get hydrogen generation. So these regions here uh, represent the region in which uh, species can exist in solution. Uh, not all species exist in solutions, so there are regions outside uh, which may be of interest, ge geochemical interest, for example. So that's one good thing. We can uh, see at a snapshot what species are present under different electrochemical potentials and pHs. Another thing we can do is we can superpose two different maps, one in this case for copper and another one for, say, iron. And looking at the overlapping regions, we can tell which species will react with each other. That's really cool. Um, generally speaking, they're most often used, these pool bay diagrams, to discuss corrosion behavior of different metals and alloys. Okay, so let's look a little bit more carefully at the lines on these pool bay diagrams. The lines are the boundaries of these countries, the countries of stable species, and we need to figure out how to find them. So let's have a look at some basic features. Um, here's a vertical line here separating Cu2 plus and copper oxide solid. So the vertical line represents uh, a set of conditions where both of these species can be simultaneously stable. In other words, they're in equilibrium. This is an equilibrium line. Neither one nor the other is stable. And here we have written the equilibrium line. Now, why is this uh, a vertical line? Well, we can see that the vertical line occurs at a particular pH and at a range of potentials. 
That is that this equilibrium between copper 2 plus and CuOH2 solid doesn't involve any electrons. It doesn't, it's not an electrochemical reaction. We have copper 2 plus and here we have copper 2 plus in the hydroxide. So clearly not an electrochemical reaction. And that is the reason why this is a vertical line. You can see here the reaction also doesn't involve any electrons on that, uh, for that particular equilibrium. Now here's a horizontal line, exactly the opposite. This occurs at a particular voltage, but at a range of pHs. Um, and that's the equilibrium between copper 2 plus and copper solid. So pretty clearly, if we add acid to that particular equilibrium, it won't make any difference. It doesn't involve hydrogen ions or OH ions. And indeed, if we look at this classic reaction, it's just a, the, your usual half reaction, copper 2 plus plus two electrons go to copper solid. There are no hydrogen ions appearing in this equation, and that is why it occurs at a particular voltage. In fact, if we're talking about one molar solution of copper 2 plus, this would be the standard voltage for copper, standard half potential for copper. Sometimes people use the symbol EH, uh, especially in geochemistry, to indicate that this is a standard potential relative to the hydrogen electrode. Um, I won't use that generally, uh, but just to point out that people do use that. It's just a voltage. So that's horizontal and vertical lines. Now, uh, the other case, of course, is sloped lines. So we have here a couple of sloped lines with copper oxide. Uh, and here uh, we're looking at one particular slope line. It involves both electrons and hydrogens. And you can often get that when you balance redox equations, as you know. So this is an equilibrium between copper 2 plus and copper 2 oxide. Uh, so we're talking about this particular line here, copper 2 plus copper 2 oxide, uh, and you can see it's sloped uh, upwards, which is interesting. Normally we have sloped lines on sloping this way, and we'll, we'll see why that is in a second. So sloping lines indicate reactions which depend on both electrons and protons, particular half reaction. Their equilibria, the point at which equilibrium occurs, can be changed by pH and simultaneously voltage. Uh, 